the first three Mercedes that I owned. So today I was thinking about, I was taking a trip down memory lane. I was thinking about the first three Mercedes that I owned that I drove on a daily basis. Now, there were a couple of other cars in there that I never really got to enjoy that much, but uh, there were three cars that I'm always going to remember, and um, I have two of them still. They're in horrible condition, but I still, sometimes it's hard to let go of an old friend. <laughs> So, um, those three cars were a 1974 240D, a 1985 300SD, and a 1969 220D. And so, the first car which I got when I was 15 was a 74 240D. It was a very basic ivory on bamboo car, produced in November of 73, so it was a really early 240D. For those of you that are like 115 nerds, it had a green dot in the middle of the headlight switch and it had a chrome steering lock face still. So it was that that early of a 240D. Um, it was a manual window car, air conditioning, automatic, floor shift, of course. You know, there was nothing incredibly special or unspecial about it, but it was my first car, and I still kind of have, and I still think maybe I should restore this car one day, you know, even though it's in horrible condition. But my dad and I went and picked the car up for $350. It had a bad transmission, which somebody explained to me how I got the one 240D automatic with a bad transmission. doesn't make any sense, but it did. So we got another transmission. We actually pulled the engine out and welded a bunch of stuff because the car, you know, old diesels vibrate. And um, that was my car for years and years and years. I mean, I was even driving that car after college. You know, I got a lot of good miles and memories of that car as I like had. 10 years? Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I last time I drove the car, I was like 24 or 25 or something. So, you know, for a $350 car with a $600 paint job, we didn't do too badly, but that was sort of the car that got me interested in the 115 particularly. Now, the other car I had, which taught me a lot about how well Mercedes diesels were built, was an 85 300SD that I bought from my buddy Dustin. And Dustin and I are still friends. He watched this channel. He has an 83 300SD. And um, the 85 I bought for $100 because it had a leaking injection pump, but I could not get the injection pump to start and stop leaking. But finally, my dad and I worked on it because my dad had an injection pump repair shop and I worked with him. And so it would be a natural course of action that in addition to putting an injection pump diaphragm in the 240D and me getting the timing 180 degrees out, I should be able to replace an O-ring in the, one of the delivery valves of the 300SD pump, which I did. You know, I got it fixed. And the car ran extremely well. I had a lot of fun driving that car. I remember driving that car to my high school graduation. And I looked at the 240D and I looked at the 300SD and I said, there is no freaking way that I'm going to get there on time in the 240D because at the time I did not know how to set up the kickdown linkage in the 240. So I was in fourth gear by 28 miles an hour. I remember climbing the bridge over the Merritt Island Causeway slowly but surely at 25 miles an hour in fourth gear being like, Ugh, you know, this is taking forever. Then when I discovered the car kickdown, it was like, whoa. Amazing. Um, so the 300 SD I traded later on for a 73 220D, which was a bad decision, I think, because the, both cars ended up getting scrapped by their respective idiot owners. And this is one of the reasons I get so angry when I see scrapped cars that are perfectly good, because I knew both of those cars are perfectly good. But I mean, they were rusty cars. They needed a lot of work, but both of those cars did not belong there. You know, years later, you know, now that I have my buddy Austin, Miles, and I know some other really capable people. It's like, why would I throw away any good car, you know? But you meet the right people, and then your business is busy, and you end up with no time on your hands. But I think the third car that was near and dear to me was my 69 220D. And this was a very basic car. It had power steering, which I got rid of later um, because I was having so many issues with the system. But very basic car that I bought for $150. And I traded it for a 74 240D, which is cosmetically better, but it had a cracked cylinder head. Because again, when I was like 
19 years old, I wasn't that smart, you know, for those of you that is employer, you know, and with that, the 220, I never thought would be a lifetime car, but I basically ended up living in that car, even though it was super rusty. I even got into an accident with it, which was compounded in severity by the amount of rust that car had. I mean, this car had so much rust. I lost two cell phones through holes in the floor. You know, I mean, I was really, really, really roughing it with that car. And um, all my friends saw that car and they were unbelieving of the fact that it ran and drove so well. But it did. I mean, it burned a quart of oil every 150 miles. I remember when I changed the valve stem seals in that car and they were rock solid. I said, oh, this is going to reduce my oil consumption. Well, it did. I was able to get 175 miles out of a quart of oil instead of 125. But early 220Ds had serious oil consumption issues, so I'm not surprised. The car was a pain to start because its fuel system would void itself of fuel. I could never get all the leaks out of the fuel system, but like a, an old watch where you spend five minutes winding it, it would keep time for the rest of the day. And um, I drove this car for four years and I was starting my shop a hundred miles a day or more. Caught $150 car, rust holes everywhere, you know, electrical system that was kind of hanging on by a thread, but it always started and ran. And um, I I really had a lot of faith in Mercedes engineering after that. And um, people always joke, they're like, oh, were you ever late? And I'm like, no, because you learned to leave early, you know, if you have a 220. But the car would actually run okay at 70 miles an hour. I remember one time my friends were opening a new church up in Jacksonville. My friend Andrew Roberts. Andrew, I don't know if you ever watched this channel, but, you know, Andrew was a good dude. And he was one of my, he's one of my few friends that I count from high school. And um, he, um, he started this new church in Jacksonville. I remember driving the 220D up to Jacksonville at 73 miles an hour because that was about all the noise I could stand. Bah! You know, and the exhaust, of course, is all broken up and everything. And so it just, it, it smelled like exhaust in there and everything. That's why I wonder if today, that's why I have so many problems running because of driving that car. But um, Andrew... And, and some of his friends saw that car and they're like, did you really drive that car? And I said, yeah, I drive it everywhere, you know. I had um, I had another friend, I had some other friends at Florida Southern College. Um, and um, I used to drive the car to see them with my old college roommate. And he was always mesmerized at how good of a car it was. I don't know. I just always liked the car. It got me through college along with the 240D. It was there when I started my business. It was there when I moved out here to Titusville and I think at some point when the passenger door wouldn't close and the clutch was just getting really weird and the transmission was getting weird and the compression numbers were all well below 200 and I could barely get it started I said it's time to let you rest in peace old car you know we had a wild ride together I mean there were nights when I slept in that car that's when people come to me and they see me and they're like oh Pierre I'm, I'm so impressed by your humility. I'm like, well, sometimes I'm humble. Sometimes I could be more humble. But I always remember sleeping in my car. Parked underneath a tree in front of my old shop. And I think a lot of Mercedes mechanics who are doing okay have humble beginnings. You know, I know a lot of people have a story like this to tell. And a lot of the time when I slept in my car, it's because I didn't have literally six dollars for diesel fuel to drive from my shop back to my parents house I could sleep there and I just just sort of like okay well here I am you know might as well have a job to do work all night and make the money um, anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video a little window into my past some of the cars I've loved uh, if you want to hear more about some of the great Mercedes that I've owned or, and still own I would love to tell you more about them just because they're great cars and um you know Keep those old things in the road. They're better than any new car you can buy. So in the meantime, I'm not wearing my shirt, but um, please remember to like, share, and subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Leave us an applause and um, hang on to your old Mercedes, even if it's a little rusty. <laughs>